<laughs> so thanks everyone for joining us this afternoon. We're going to talk about a project we've been working on for a couple of years. My name is Costas. I have more than 10 years of experience in the field of information application security, both as an academic researcher and in the industry. Currently, I am leading the team of information security consultants at OTE, which is the largest telco in Greece. We're offering information security services to our clients. Uh, I've been involved with OWASP since 2005, organizing the APSEC EU conference last year. I think that, that was the highlight of uh, my uh, involvement with OWASP. And uh, this is Spiros. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Spiros Kasteratos. Uh, I'm a student at the University of Athens in Greece, a bachelor student. Uh, in, uh, when I'm not studying, I work as a freelance web development. Uh, up till a week ago, I worked uh, with uh, a small startup company called Telesto Technologies. I'm uh, I actively involved uh, with OWASP uh, since 2010. I co-organized with Costas uh, last year at the AppSec Research uh, Conference, and I joined, I joined Hackademic in uh, 2011, and now I'm uh, the lead developer and uh, one of the project leaders. Okay, since this is a project about that has to do with education and teaching application security, let's see how many of you are somehow involved with teaching security at the university or school or are students? Okay, quite a few of you. Uh, so hopefully you will find this uh, an interesting tool to work uh, while you're teaching at students. Just to give you a bit of a background, uh, how we came up about with Hackademic. Uh, actually, we had a few friends which are teaching at universities in uh, Greece, and they had some big challenges because we have big classes. They might be teaching to 300 students during one semester. So having 300 students in an auditorium is quite a big challenge. And you also want to give these students an opportunity to have some hands-on experience in security, to actually feel how security works in the real world. So I think everyone, every professor, every teacher dreams of having a penetration testing lab or a hands-on lab where the students can actually get involved. And at the same time, uh, it's uh, the situation in Greece and I think all over the world that uh, universities produce very good developers I have uh, finished computer science at the Greek University and know a lot of things about development. They taught me all the methodologies and everything, but no one talked about me how to produce secure software. No one taught, taught me how to how security works in the applications. So uh, we ident identified this gap and tried to bridge uh, the technical world with the world of academia. So that's how Hackademic came about. Hackademic is started as a series of challenges. Uh, that students had to solve and uh, at the same time they were realistic they were based on our experience in the field and uh, but implemented in a safe environment so they wouldn't harm any server they're just dummy challenges based on PHP uh, and uh, the goal was to get them involved to get their hands on and uh, see how security works so just to give you a brief idea of the of the timeline it all started back in 2010 where we had uh, a couple of security professionals building these challenges and then they got in touch with security professors and uh, they decided to use Hackademic in the academic environment in the classroom. Uh, meanwhile, we got involved with OWASP and uh, joined the OWASP Summit, it was two years ago, I think, presented the Hackademic at the OWASP Summit and there was a huge interest by universities all over the world. So it became an OWASP project and started getting expanded. On top of that, we had people from all over the world wanting to contribute, either with new challenges or with changes. Uh, NJIT University is a very good example that they decided to build a Joomla interface on top of it. And uh, then we got involved in the Google Summer of Code. Uh, this is our second year in the Google Summer of Code. And uh, we had some really great expansions with students that worked on Hackademic during the Google Summer of Code. You will be able to see some of those in the next slides. Uh, so we were really surprised to see that Hackademic is actively used by so many universities around the world, not only in Greece, but also in the USA, Israel, in Asia, uh, Brazil. So we get feedback from all over these countries that find Hackademic very useful. So it all, it all started as having 10 simple challenges and sitting on a Joomla front end. So it was a Joomla front end that the users could register, log in, and then they could try the challenges see if they were successful, see how they rank among their peers. 
very simple interface. It was very simple as it worked. Uh, the challenges had some specific rules. So if you wanted to implement a new challenge, you have to follow some rules. So for first, there has to be a myth. There has to be a story, something that will make the challenge attractive to the students. It has to be realistic. It has to focus on a specific topic. And it needs to have a single answer. So it has a definitive answer so that students know if they were successful or not. Uh, and this answer should come about using a specific strategy. Uh, we don't know, want to have fuzzy points. And uh, when you teach at the university and mark students, they need to know that there is an honest procedure and everything is consistent. So we have to follow all those rules. Uh, in the beginning, it was a big challenge to introduce academic in the classroom, but the students' reactions were really amazing. They were really fun of it. We actually had students trying all the challenges at home right after the course, see how they went. They were really excited to, uh, to have this hands-on experience. And I think Spiros was one of the students that actually tried academic as a student so he can give you more feedback. Uh, uh, yeah, actually, uh, it didn't, uh, when I was at the, at the security class in my university, the, we didn't have academic yet, but uh, one of the guys who wrote the first version uh, introduced me to it. It was, I was amazed by the fact that I could use something in my computer uh, and if I got stuck, I could uh, view uh, the source code and understand the source code instead of just having uh, most online platforms give me, okay, put this there and it's over. Um, we have actually students uh, that uh, now are coming to us uh, with uh, new challenges and uh, they're implement after they finish the semester and uh, their course, they take a month or something, implement a new challenge and give it back to us. So which is actually, I'm impressed by that because uh, students contribute back instead of just uh, getting high grades, which is very cool. Uh, not pretty much that. So as we are in an academic environment, we actually wanted to measure this reaction into something that was, into some metrics. So we, we every semester we send out questionnaires to the students to see how they actually, if they liked it and get some feedback. And the feedback is really good. and. Uh, even though students might have no previous experience with security, they find the challenge is really useful. So that was the first version uh, of the academic, and since then, uh, mostly because of the Google Summer of Code, we had some really new features and new uh, cool stuff that were implemented into academic that lead us to the version we have today. So the, the first thing that we worked on, and this was during GSOC last year, was a new interface. We found out that Joomla wasn't exactly what we wanted. It was a clean and good solution, easy to implement, but we wanted something more focused on what we wanted to do in the teaching world, in the academic world. So we decided to build a new, um, a new interface uh, that would uh, fulfill our needs uh, to use it in a classroom. You will be able to, to see more of the interface in the demo we're going to do at the end of the, of the talk. Uh, one good thing about Hackademic is that it is available online. You don't have to set up anything. It's, uh, you just browse to hackademic.eu. It's there. You can, log, uh, you can create an account, log in, and start playing with it right away. So if you're a teacher, you, don't, you do not need to install anything on your labs. You do not need a server. You can use the online infrastructure. But at the same time, there are some other schools that w would like to implement Hackademic on their own environment. That's why we, we built an installer that facilitates the installation. All you need to have is an Apache server with PHP and MySQL, and there's an automated procedure that guides you through installation. So it's very easy. You'll have a chance to see it in a minute. And then you have some roles that are implemented in the interface. Basically, there's an administrator who is uh, capable to do practically everything. And then we have students that can log in and try the challenges that are assigned to them see their progress, see how they rank among the cl their class, and also see how they rank on a global scale among all classes. And then we have teachers. Teachers can create classes, assign users to classes, assign challenges to the classes, monitor students' progress, give hints, and so on. So in terms of managing students and classes, as I said, you can create new classes, you can assign them, you can ar archive them if it's the end of the semester. And uh, another important feature is that you can add articles, which can be announcements, grades, uh, educational material, anything you want. Another cool functionality that we implemented after we had so many requests for new challenges was the, an automated procedure for importing these challenges. 
you want to talk about it a bit? Oh, yeah, true. Um, since we have uh, we didn't have our own, only our own challenges, but we had students bring us challenges. Uh, we needed a quick and clean way to upload them to the server, and uh, but it had to be secure. You don't want uh, a, another people's code on your server without verifying. So um, we just uh, created an uploader that uploads a challenge in a directory which uh, does not have any permissions, and. Um, you have the administrator notified, and uh, he has to look at the challenge, uh, verify that it's a valid challenge and not an attack on the system from within. So, uh, and if he likes the challenge, uh, he can assign it to classes or he can enable it and assign it to let teachers assign it to everyone they like, or make it, or even make it global for everyone to try and play with the challenge. So, so currently we are building the documentation that will give all the details on how the challenge needs to be built. It's all PHP, but you have to implement specific classes and specific methods so that the challenges will actually work with Hackademic. And after that, it will be really easy for anyone to implement the challenge and then automatically upload it and see it actually running on their class. Another important concept is marking. Uh, there are many similar uh, applications that simulate vulnerable environments, vulnerable applications, vulnerable sites, and so on. The difference is that uh, in, it has to do with scoring and marking. Uh, all known vulnerable applications have a binary way of scoring usually. You either succeed in uh, solving the challenge or you don't succeed. So it's either I did it or I didn't do it. it but it doesn't work this way at the university. In university, you don't have binary grades. You have a uh, hundred uh, percentage uh, for a grade or a 0 to 10. So we needed to simulate this way of scoring into academic challenges. So what we did is we implemented a new scoring system, which is a bit more complex than the usual binary att attempt. So we take into account various metrics to see how good the student is. For example, we count how many attempts a student has made to solve the challenge. More attempts means less score. We try to see how many attempts per minute the student takes. This way we're trying to see if he uses automated scripts or automated tools trying to cheat. We also uh, try to give some bonus points. For example, if we see that a student keeps trying to find alternative answers, even though he has already solved the challenge, it means that he's interested, so maybe we should award his interest with a couple more points. We also try to detect known user agents to see if a student is, is actually uh, using some uh, vulnerability assessment tools, some automated tools, again, it is considered cheating, and so on. Spiros has also made uh, some very useful security enhancements in uh, academic. Uh, yeah, uh, a couple of while ago, uh, I used uh, Isapi for PHP before I found out that it's pretty much deprecated. Right. And uh, I did some input validation, escape, and pretty much all the PHP security 101 stuff. Uh, and we needed, uh, because we store pretty much everything in the session, even scoring, we did it, uh, good session management. So I think I did that correctly. Oh, but if you find anything, please let us know. I mean, I'm still a student, not a good uh, application developer. Um, we had uh, many stuff, but uh, it definitely needs improvement. Uh, there is, I think it's in a later slide, that we are going to switch to a different, uh, more actively developed uh, security framework. So uh, the newest feature has to do with a plugin API that uh, Daniel, Daniel, are you here? Yeah, he's right there. Yeah, he's right there. He's our student for this year, Google Summer of Code, and he has implemented the plugin API. Spirits can talk about it a bit. Uh, yeah. Uh, so our guide, Daniel, he's a very good developer, actually. Um, we came up with this idea that uh, if we're going to use it, uh, if many guys are, many professors are going to use it in their universities, they are going to have uh, different needs. And surely they, we, they would going to have features that we never thought of. For example, uh, I proposed it to our university. And uh, they said that uh, we need, uh, implement, uh, not implementation. We need integration with our LDAP server, which I never thought that anyone would use an LDAP server for that. But 
So uh, we came up with the plugin API as a proposal for Google Summer of Code. Uh, Daniel made the best uh, implementation. Uh, it has pretty much everything. Uh, pretty, uh, we looked at the APIs for uh, popular CMSs like Drupal, Joomla, WordPress, and uh, we took ideas from there and uh, implemented it in Hackademic. Uh, you can do uh, pretty much everything. There are hooks, uh, functions that uh, say like things like on before login, uh, and you can register a callback, which will be called before the user login, so it may do something. And um, these uh, hooks are in pretty much every controller uh, twice one before the controller and one after the controller runs. Uh, you can create themes, uh, the actions I told about. And the uh, best thing that Daniel did for us was that uh, plugins are manageable, manageable through the UI. Uh, you have uh, WordPress like uh, user interface where you can uh, tick on boxes and enable or disable plugins. And uh, also install uh, plugins through uh, the same UI. It's not in the main branch yet because Google Summer of Code hasn't finished, but uh, I think late October, right, Daniel? Yeah, should be. Yeah, uh, late October, uh, it will be online and uh, usable by everyone. So just to give you a quick, quick idea of how uh, Hackadem well, what Hackademic looks like, uh, just give you, a yeah, okay, cool. So uh, this is the installer, actually. If you just download the code and uh, extract it in a directory, you, you point it to your browser this directory, and you start the installer. So it's only available in English for now. You just add the admin information, username, password. Then you need to give the uh, database details. I have already installed MySQL in this box. So database is created and we move along. And it's practically ready, ready to use. So if I point back to Academic, I get the front page. So I can log in as admin now. And this is the administrative interface. Uh, I can post new, new articles using the add new article functionality, write announcements or whatever. See the existing articles right now, only the welcome page is available. And then we have the users and classes functionality where I can add more users. For example, I can add a student. An email. password. Activate the user and it's there. Uh, afterwards, the, every user that is created is automatically assigned to a global class, but I can also have different classes, for example, uh, spring 2013 class and so on. Uh, and also each class has specific challenges assigned to it. So. Sometimes teachers want to assign all the challenges at once, and sometimes want to, ass to assign a challenge each week, for example, as an assignment. Uh, so each, each class has specific users in it, and then specific challenges. And for each challenge, I can assign different scoring rules. For example, in challenge three, which is an XSS challenge, uh, if everything is zero, it means it's not activated. But I can then say that uh, students can have three attempts at most. After that, they have a penalty, and the penalty is minus two points, for example. Uh, should we talk about that in detail? Uh, how much time do we have? We don't have much time. That's right. OK, and then? Yeah. I just want to give you a brief idea. And also, the, the score for a successful attempt, if no penalties, it's five points. So if a challenge is more difficult, you can give more points. If it's an easier one, you can, you can give less points. And the, the thing that you need to, to keep is that you can have custom scoring rules for each challenge if you want. So I, I can save that. Uh, there is also the add new challenge functionality. 
uh, I can enter the challenge details manually or have everything on the zip file and upload it. It's automatically uploaded. And then I can also see all the available challenges. We have uh, even an example template, an example challenge template, uh, which is there for uh, challenge makers. All you have to do to upload the challenge directly is uh, have an XML file inside the zip file with all the code. It gets uploaded, XML file is read it, presto. Yeah. So let me log in as a student now. I can see all the challenges that I can try and are available for me. Um, I can also see my progress. I haven't done anything right now. I haven't attempted any challenge. And also the ranking in my class and also in the global class. So let's try challenge number three, for example. We have the story that explains what the challenge is about and what the goal is. There has to be a clear goal so that we know when we're done. So here is just a, we have to just implement an alert box. And remember, we have three attempts. If we make it in less than three attempts, it's five points. If we make it in more than three attempts, it's, it should be three points. So if we, let's do it in more than three attempts. Of course, I, I am to not succeed. And then let's do the right one. Let me copy paste it to be quick. As you can see, the, it's the basic XSS. Yeah, it's just a script okay. alert. Uh, so this is successful. Also, uh, let me point, these challenges are not uh, vulnerable. I mean, if you, do, if you input anything other than a script alert XSS script, it won't run. It's uh, just a PHP if close. So every challenge should be like this. We don't uh, like uh, challenges that, that actually compromise anything. So I, I had more than three attempts, so I got minus two points. If I did it in one, I, would, I wouldn't get any penalty. So just to wrap this up, some things that we're uh, working on if, is a academic ecosystem. That's our vision for the project, it's to uh, build a community of teachers, students, uh, teachers that will be using academic to make their life easier, uh, students that will be actually using it as an assignment or to get a better grade. And then the community or professionals contributing with new challenges. And some things that we're working on is a documentation, a more detailed documentation. Currently, we have a teacher's guide, which is only available to teachers. So if you want it, you have to email it for us. For obvious, re for obvious reasons, we don't make it publicly available. Otherwise, all the students will download it and have the solutions ready. We're working on a hardened VM version, also a live CD improvements in terms of uh, security. We want to build in also some questionnaires that will either be used as an exam or as getting statistics and feedback. Uh, add the content that has to do with uh, teaching, adding more challenges, and also implement a reporting mechanism that teachers can use to see how good their students are, how they progress, and so on. So we need to thank some people that have been working on the project for some time now, uh, either in, from the academic point of view, using academic challenges or actively contributing with code and challenges. And uh, our next stop will be at uh, AppSec USA. We have a, we are participating at the project summit, focusing on not only on academic, but also on how OWASP can help educational institutions teach application security. So if you guys are coming to New York, we're, we can also work there and talk about education and application security. Uh, meanwhile, if you want to try out academic, it's available at academic.eu. It's free, it's open source. You can create an account, log in, and try everything. So that's it pretty much. Thank you very much. So thank you very much for the talk. Uh, are there any questions? We, till, we still have uh, two or three minutes. Um, you said that the challenges have to have uh, um, exactly one answer. And for example, the challenge um, of having an alert window, I mean, there are at least um, yeah. many different ways. So um, how do you do this? Okay. Uh, well, um, the, these challenges have to have exactly one answer because uh, the answer mechanism is not built into them. You can register as many answers as you like. You can have a if answer equals to other, uh, one thing, 
report success if it equals another also report success it's up to the challenge maker uh, the guys who built the challenge these challenges in the first place uh, they put only one answer but we actually had a Google Summer of Code suggestion that said uh, to change the answers to regular expressions which would be good but uh, we thought that it's more important to have uh, a concrete uh, backend than uh, multiple solution challenges. Just, just to add up to that, um, I know what you mean. I completely agree with you. Uh, but there are some, some people that are in favor of having multiple challenges and some people that want to keep it in one challenge. There are many reasons for that. One reason is to be uh, consistent and fair with all students. So there's only one answer and all the students have to find the same answer. And also it, that it reflects sometimes what happens in the real world. Because in the real world, sometimes you can access a website through a certain way and all other ways do not work. Uh, but uh, actually, we want to work on having multiple uh, answers to each challenge and maybe randomized as well. So maybe uh, this is something that we're thinking and maybe we'll work on it in the near future. OK, we have time for one last question. Oh, yeah. Are you thinking of adding any tests for challenges which do actually require security tools? So things which are more complex and can't be automated but require intercepting proxies or whatever? Well, most, of them, most of them actually do require some kind of proxy or some kind of tool. Uh, we just want to eliminate known vulnerability scanners. So, like so, because it's considered cheating in some way yeah, or another. Definitely. But yeah, most of these tools require to have Zap or some something like a proxy to be able to. to but at the same time, they're relatively simple because we don't want teachers to have to tell students that they need to install so much software, and we need to have it simple. Okay, uh, I have one more question. Um, uh, universities usually use uh, some kind of web application to, to manage their practicals and things like that. In Germany, we have this system, it's called Ilias. Do you have any export and import features where you can batch import, let's say, 300, uh, 300 students? Uh, no, uh, we don't have that, uh, actually. But uh, that's a reason uh, we built the plugin API. Okay. Uh, any, stu any teacher who wants to do that can have, a, have us or some of his students code it. Okay, thank you very much. Please uh, thank the speakers again.